serious, when was the time you legitimately thought you were going to die? Very recently I had some kind of super fast virus or illness. Not sure what it was but it basically started off with me feeling an incredible sense of impending doom. Which I know is a sign for panic attacks. But I don't get panic attacks. And that feeling lasted until I started getting cold. Usually I'm way too warm. But this time I had to bundle up. That didn't work and even getting into bed didn't help. I started shivering so hard my muscles began to tighten and it was so painful I had to jump into the shower to stop it. But before I could get in I started getting lightheaded and had to lie down on the floor it was like everything was spinning. And then I had the urge to shti and puke at the same time. Not being able to think clearly I get into the tub in an attempt to do both just in case. At that moment I couldn't stand or coordinate properly. Shivering. Lightheaded. About to shti and puke. I thought to myself I must be about to die and this is how I'll be found. I ended puking first. Felt better enough to shti in proper place and then showered to stop the shivering. After all of that it was like nothing happened and I was better again. My third round with double pneumonia. Put into isolation on round the clock oxygen. There's just something about such severe oxygen deprivation that you get dizzy and hack up a lung just crossing a room to pick up a book that makes you certain the end is coming. My lungs shut down during chemo, allergy to one of the chemo drugs, and... Yeah. Not being able to breathe or catch your breath is terrifying. Even when your care is amazing like mine was an IQ. My lung capacity is reduced quite a bit since. But I can exercise still. So I consider myself lucky. I woke up in the morning to get ready for work. Bent to tie my shoe. And when I stood back up the sight in my right eye was entirely gone. I did the usual thing of blinking and shaking my head a little. Thinking maybe blood rushed to my head weird or whatever. But it wouldn't come back. I tried to explain to my partner that I was in trouble. But when I spoke the wrong words kept coming out. I don't remember exactly what I said. But I definitely said tree instead of hospital at one point. I figured I was having a stroke or an aneurysm had ruptured. Or something brain tumory. Who knows. Whatever the case I spent the entire ride to the hospital crying and telling my partner over and over that I loved him. It felt like I couldn't say it enough. Turns out I was preparing for my first migraine, cluster headaches. I do not recommend them. And the migraine aura I get is blindness and aphasia because I'm a lucky girl like that I guess. I was really sick when I was 12. Missed a whole semester of school. I was throwing up every day and had no energy. Doctors couldn't figure it out. Had test after test. Visited specialist after specialist and nothing. All we did know is my liver wasn't functioning. I was pretty jaundiced. I was pretty sure I would die before we knew what was wrong. It's hard to explain but I came to terms with it. Like I was more comfortable with death as a concept when I was 12 than I am now at 25. Turns out it was my gallbladder. They had checked it for gallstones early on but that wasn't the issue. My particular malfunction didn't show up on an ultrasound. The bile duct into my stomach didn't form correctly from birth and it was hindering complete bile drainage leading to sepsis in my gallbladder liver. One surgery and two weeks bed rest and I was back to normal. Edit. Well golly. To answer the most common questions. I got referred to a pediatric gastroenterologist who decided to order the HEDA scan you are all referencing. The barium milkshake thing you have to drink is absolutely disgusting. Comma that indeed caught it. Why my local physicians didn't order one is beyond me. I am not a doctor and was 12. I do know that one doctor didn't even want an ultrasound for gallstones because I was too young to have gallstones. I was on vacation this past summer. Was staying at a friend's house. When I started to notice my chest feeling tight. I started to get a fever and feel sick. I threw up and the feeling in my chest started to expand. It felt like it was going to explode. Like a balloon beamed inflated inside me. I couldn't stand it. I literally felt like at any moment my heart would give out or my chest would explode. Went to the emergency. Turns out I had a really bad gallbladder attack. 
but on the drive to the hospital I was telling my wife how much I love her lol and that if she remarries don't let it be anyone we currently know ha ha ha. Hit a stopped car going over 65 miles per hour. Spent 2 years in a wheelchair. 6 months of that was learning to walk again. Honestly thought I was going to die in the seconds before impact. I can still clearly see the people in the other car. The other traffic around us. Car was stopped to turn on a highway with no middle turning lane. I was the only one injured though. And I'm still sort of grateful for that because I swear there was a kid in the back seat of the other car. I wasn't the driver. Front seat passenger of a reckless driver. Some DCK pulled a revolver on me while at a party. Turns out it was one of those decommissioned ones with a cemented barrel and cylinder. But I didn't know at the time and it was fking scary. What a dumbass. That's a good way to get shot. Yeah never point a gun at someone you don't intend to shoot. Common sense and gun etiquette 101. When I had migraine with aura for the first time. I didn't even know this was a thing. But it started with the worst migraine I ever had followed by me losing my sight and becoming dizzy and feeling sick. I thought this was it. I told my sister that I thought I was gonna die. She told me she has those migraines too. Brought me a pill specifically for these migraines and told me to sleep. She stayed with me until I woke up just to be sure. Scary as hell. The 5th of October 2019 rear-ended by a dump truck. In a coma for 42 days and I'm now paralyzed. So sorry to hear this. How are you? T2 T3 vertebra break. Cord crushed but not severed. Can't walk but never say never. I have a great support system so I'd say I'm lucky. I took an edible before a flight from Portland to San Francisco. I proceed to get very. Very high both metaphorically and literally. The plane begins its descent and as it does this it seems to take a steeper angle than usual and I notice the engine seemingly turn off or stop making as much noise. In my paranoid stoned mind I become convinced that the engines have failed and we are going to crash. I begin composing my last texts to send out to my family and friends. Saving them all as drafts. And then like 20 minutes later I notice that none of the flight attendants are worried at all and still smiling and joking. This is when I realize that the plane was not in fact crashing and I'm just an idiot. Woke up immediately wide awake in the middle of the night without moving and the hair standing up on the back of my neck because my now ex-wife was standing in our bedroom holding a large kitchen knife and staring at my feet. She had had a schizophrenic break a few months earlier and had started referring to me as the enemy. I laid there without moving. She stood there for over an hour. Have no idea how long she was there before I woke up. Anyway. She leaves the room and comes back without a knife. Gets into bed. And cuddles in little spoon style like she made a decision. Then she made me waffles for breakfast. Best believe I put on my best oh wow. Amazing wife. These waffles are yum voice. A couple friends and I were driving home from a birthday party and we got rear-ended by a drunk driver who was going about 120. On impact all of the windows exploded and the tires caved inwards and we were going about 70 so there was a sort of slingshot effect that made us pick up some speed, we were just careening down the freeway with zero control. The car swerved around a bunch. Almost hits another car and a pole and eventually rolled into an area just right of the shoulder. Luckily it ended up back upright on the tires and somehow ended up facing the complete opposite direction we were initially going. We thought our friend in the backseat was dead but she was just unconscious and ended up having some pretty bad whiplash. My other friend and I were basically unharmed except for some cuts and bruises and just overall body ache for a little bit. This was in 2007 and I still think about pretty frequently. We all probably should have died for sure. When I had a panic attack and I thought it was a heart attack. I woke up with what I thought was a panic attack. I actually was retaining water and started going into heart failure. Fun wake up call. Perfect thing to say to a guy that has panic attacks. FFS. I'm just saying they're not always panic attacks. I almost didn't call an ambulance because I thought that's all it was. So did the EMT. Just be careful. Back in July I was riding my motorcycle and was turning into my driveway. 
a girl came from behind me around a sharp turn and t-boned me. She was going at least 60 miles per hour up until a couple seconds before impact when she hit her brakes. She hit me because she was either texting or looking around with something in her car. Either way she wasn't paying attention. I remember hearing tires screeching and seeing the car half a second before impact then everything went black. I broke the windshield with my head. Broke the mirror with my hip. Then landed face first on the road. I do remember being scared because I wasn't sure if there were more cars so adrenaline kicked in and I caught myself with my hands and knees and pushed myself to my feet to run off the road. That's where I regained my vision. The bike was totaled but thanks to my helmet and pure rage at being hit I managed to literally walk away with only a concussion. Nasty bruises. And a deep bone bruise on my left foot. No broken bones at all. It's been 8 months and I'm still recovering from the concussion. My toe barely hurts. And the leg that took the impact has a dent in the muscle but other than that I'm fine. If I wouldn't have been wearing a helmet then I have no doubt that I would be dead now. Wear your damn helmet kids. Edit. That last wear should be wear. It's weird I misspelled that. It's like I got a concussion recently haha. As a child I would go bodyboarding at the beach. But only on our summer vacations. Being the excited child I was. I would swim for hours. And one of those times. I got super worn out from the surf and sun. I swam out to catch a wave. And was sitting there waiting for a good one. I laid down. I shut my eyes. Even though it must have been only a few minutes. Though it seemed longer. I drifted far from the beach. Way past where waves broke. To my child mind. It seemed more than a football field. But I'm sure it was not that bad. Nevertheless. I couldn't swim well enough to be out there alone. Thus. I promptly paddled in. Scared as all get out. If I had fallen any more asleep. Where would I have ended up? But this is the killer. Less than 10 miles up the coast there was a shark attack hours earlier. I'm also wonder if I would have been in one piece when I woke up. During childbirth with my second. It was so much different that time around and I literally thought I would die from the pain. Which is weird because the first time around. I was fine and didn't feel that way at all. This is my answer too. I distinctly remember knowing that I was going to die and being okay with it. I'd been pushing for so long and I had nothing left. I was so exhausted. I knew I was going to die. And that was fine. I just needed to get that baby out and then I could die and finally get some rest. I had a normal. Though lengthy. Birth. So this was in no way based in reality. I got left in a hot tub as a kid and the jets pushed me towards the center where I couldn't stand up. All I remember thinking was someone's gonna have to do CPR on me and that's gonna be really gross. My godfather noticed me and yanked me out of there while my mom was yelling at everyone asking who left me unattended in the hot tub. It was her. Once when I was probably 5 or 6. My family was at an amusement park. I went on a roller coaster with my mom. Since I was way too small to ride alone but I was just barely tall enough to ride at all. This was one of those older coasters. Made of mostly wood. And the security was not great. Well. On this roller coaster ride. There were corkscrews. During the first loop around. I started to slide out of my seat. The safety strap was not properly fastened. And I was very small. So as we continued to loop I slid further and further out of my seat. I assume at first my mom thought I was yelling from the thrill. Until she looked over and barely caught me before I flew off the ride. She had to hold on to me while the ride continued for another minute or so. Before stopping. I was sobbing. My mom was borderline manic. And since we were in the frontmost seat everyone behind us immediately got out and rushed forward to make sure we were okay. That's the oldest memory I have. And it's not a great one. I think our whole family, seven of us, got season passes for free after that. Because we went suspiciously often after that. When I was in high school I ate a couple hits of acid and went body surfing while there was a hurricane off the coast. One wave would crash into me and as soon as I could recover from it and get my head above water there goes another wave sending me tumbling around in circles underwater. 
Then there was the riptide to contend with. The last thing I remember was getting sucked out to sea and the lights from the beach getting further and further away. I have no idea how I made it back to the beach. But when I woke up every muscle in my arms and legs felt like they were on fire and I was puking up what felt like 2 gallons of water. In retrospect. I think body surfing while tripping balls in a hurricane was a bad idea. I got hit by a car and lost consciousness for a few seconds. I remember the moment I saw the car the moment I got hit and had a thousand thoughts going through my head. Like in a dream. And then there I am in the middle of the road. I woke up and ran to the side of it as fast as I could. Little did I know I was running with a broken leg. I had an emotional trauma induced seizure. Basically you brain stops and reboots. I had this feeling of fading into a warmth. I saw a warm yellow light at first but it all faded into a blackness. I remember thinking I don't know what's happening but I think I'm about to die I had a moment of reflection as I fell. I felt like I was being held by something calm telling me it may just be my time. I was 14. About 2 weeks ago. I started having strange pains in my chest. At first. It seemed to originate from my heart. Of course. I overreacted and believed it to be a dangerous issue with my heart. I'd seriously accepted that I might not have seen the next day. Turns out. However. That I had a hole in my lung that was leaking air into my chest cavity. Which was causing the pain. Not to understate the seriousness of having a hole in one's lung. But I was glad that it wasn't anything immediately life threatening. In college my roommate decided to wake me up from a nap by putting an Adderall in my mouth because he wanted me to be up to party for the night. I took it and realized that it felt amazing. He gave me a couple more over the next few weeks. And it helped me a lot to keep up and get all of my assistants done. Despite his generosity though. He was a complete cunt. The biggest slob I ever met. Constantly stole everything that he could from me. Kicked me out when he had girls over. And everything else you could imagine. So just before we went on Thanksgiving break I decided to get back at him by stealing some of his Adderall to use at home. During break I was stupid though and ended up staying awake with them for around 4 days straight. The last night my heart started going crazy from it. Felt like a panic attack but a lot more painful. Like my heart was a jackhammer. It took a while. But I managed to force myself to sleep and I never touched them again. I was severely depressed. I barely left my bed for a year. My girlfriend at the time and probably the love of my life tried to nurse me but I pushed her away. And quite frankly. Emotionally abused her. She kept me alive. After a year of eating twice a week I weighed just under 6 stone. I would occasionally venture outside to buy cigarettes or whatever. On these outings I would regularly lose my vision for up to 15 minutes at a time and suffer chest pains from the exertion. On one of my supplier runs I collapsed. I remember hearing voices wondering was I dead. I was not. I woke in hospital. That was about 12 years ago. I've slowly been piecing my life back together. I'm still a mess. But I'm a million times better than I was. I'll never fall into that hole again. Hitting a deer at a full 60 miles per hour on the highway. Came out of absolutely nowhere. Totaled my car. But my two friends and I were completely fine. It probably helped that we didn't have any time to tense up or anticipate it. It just. Happened. Edit. The part where I thought I was going to die was immediately after I hit the deer. Trying to maintain my composure and get my f up car safely to the side of the road without killing us or anyone else. In 2009-2010. When all that K2 and spice incense was really popular. I was in the army at the time and couldn't risk smoking weed on the regular. So I puffed on some K2. Didn't feel anything immediately. So I started hitting it pretty hard. Felt pretty good for a bit. So I grabbed a beer and polished the pewter real quick but then the feeling turned. My heart started racing out of control. Got really dizzy. Followed by an insane headache and began to black out. Laid back on my foot on bed. Staring at the ceiling fan. Wondering if I would wake up. Well. I woke up at 4. 30 AM. 
feeling like crap and managed to drag myself into work. Fast forward 8 years in school and I learned that Batch T was responsible for countless cardiac events among people my age. I'll never forget how fast my heart was beating. Still feel like I dodged a bullet. And haven't really messed around with any substances since. Other than the classics. Close bracket. I've been in two car accidents in my life. Both times I was the passenger. The first was when I was 14. My mom and I hydroplaned and went off the road. We missed a guardrail by inches and almost went into a pond but a barbed wire fence saved us. The second time I was 17. My stepdad and mom were in the front of the SUV. I was in the back behind my mom. My stepdad overcorrected and lost control. We were headed right for a light pole. My stepdad spun the wheel and took the hit on his side. We broke the pole and flipped four times into a field. I remember my head going through a window and just closing my eyes. When it was over we were upright. My stepdad died. I'm 100,000% positive he saved my life when he decided to take the hit on his side. A little over 10 years ago while I had my vocational training. I woke up to horrible pain in my gut area. That day I learned what an inflamed appendix means. Barely able to just stand. I still rode my bicycle through the city to get to my training place. Going to the doctor was no option. Because I wasn't covered by insurance. Fortunately I was able to walk it off, which is hella stupid, which took me weeks. When I was about 8 years old. I tied a belt around my neck. Stood on a stool and got ready to jump. Scariest moment of my life was inflicted on myself. Thankfully. I didn't have the guts to do it and I have never told anyone about it to this day. I'm 17 now and still struggling with non-extreme depression and anxiety.